Hey guys, Black Out Bill here with another cool one this time. We got a 63 five and a half fisherman. This thing is clean. I love when they're clean. It's too bad they're never mine when they're clean. Any case, let's check it out. All right, man, look at this thing. Come on, look at this thing. It's pristine. 63, five and a half. Looks like it's barely been used. It's amazing, the little scrape marks that just happened, but I mean, the paint's not faded. Yeah, little things coming up here. Handles new, everything spins. Oh, it's just nice. It's just clean. You know, it's half the time it's just the cowling. <laughs> Even the inside's pretty clean. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, just another one. Another one that was, you know, kept indoors. Or just very, you know, low miles, whatever it is, low, low hours. But it's cool. It's cool, man. It's the first 50. It's the first um, five and a half I had with this style cowling. I, you know, I always get the 18s and the 25s with it, but uh, never the five and a halfs. So, no, again, another nice clean block. Spins nice. And, uh, you know, they, they just, some of these guys, they just put this goop on the, all, all the moving parts, which, you know, it's grease, I get it, but it's unnecessary. And it's messy. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the complaint is that we're only running on choke and we're pumping water intermittently. So, this one seems pretty cut and dry. A couple fuel lines already cracked off uh, for being old. So, we'll get some new fuel lines on her. Uh, we'll check compression. Uh, de definitely going to take the carb, break that down, and put a new carb kit in it. And while that's off, we'll quick drop the lower unit, do an impeller change. And maybe we'll pressure test the gear case so we can see... Uh, Maybe a prop seal gone bad. Uh, but let's get it running first, pump and water, and then we'll deal with all that later. So 63, five and a half, Fisherman. Clean, cool, looking motor. Let's get to work. Compression's 95 each cylinder, spark is bright and blue. But let's get this carb apart. Let's drop the lower unit. Let's do a water pump impeller change, carb rebuild, and we'll call this one, this call, we'll call this one done. It's too easy, it's too clean to to show you all the BS that I've been showing you in every other video. Uh, if you guys want some more detail on it, let me know. I'll gladly redo it a hundred more times. Happy to do it. I enjoy making these kind of videos. Uh, just, I feel bad for you guys getting a little tedious. Anyway, so to get the carburetor apart on this motor, you had to do the lower, uh, the high speed mixture screw out. You gotta pop your, just pop this with a screwdriver off. And I think you had to unscrew the choke knob here. Uh, I also undid some fuel lines. I showed you how they broke. So we'll replace a couple of fuel lines there. And uh, now that those three things are disconnected from the cowling, we can do, undo our carb nuts and get this carburetor off, break it apart, and do a nice little rebuild. Okay, to get this one carb nut, you might have to take this linkage off. It's a flathead screwdriver. It might be in a weird position. You might have to pull down on the throttle to get to it. But once you do, once you get that nut, that screw loosened, you just slide it off and back it out of the way. And now you have full access to that nut right there. I'm gonna take the car apart and do this crappy unnecessary silencer plate. Couple little extenders here for the plate. That is very dilly dilly. Nuts. Let's open up the bowl and see how dirty she is. Ow! I didn't mean to rip it apart like that. Uh, but it only ran on choke, and there's a clear reason why. Bowl's full of crud. Uh, our float, which is the old style cork float, which some kits still sell the cork float, but most of the newer kits have the plastic one. And a lot of the older 50s, the big ones, have only cork float uh, setups. This one's got a little chip in it. This gasket is completely torn away. Yeah, who knows how good the needle and the seat are. This carpo gasket is disgusting. And we got particles of this gasket all over the place. So, long story short is, if it's only running on choke, it's probably a slow speed issue. It's really disintegrating in my hands. I'm gonna put all this parts, parts bin, 
gasket so I can recognize which gasket is in there. Take our needle out. And there's probably some crud up in the needle. Not gonna need any of that with the new kit, but take it apart, save it just in case. I'm gonna take the slow speed nut off. And the needle's gonna be tight because of the packings. A lot of times when it only runs on choke, it's the high speed that's kind of clogged up. And the packing is kind of loose in there. There's definitely some crud up in that section where the high speed fuel goes. But, you know, when these, these motors sit, this is what happens. You take the carpet apart, clean it all up real good. And I'm not talking soaking for days, I'm talking real live. Spray it down with the good old uh, carburetor cleaner and compressed air. Compressed air is your friend and is required. Do not take apart a 50s motor, put it back together without running compressed air through every little jet orifice hole you see. Okay, here's where we're at with the five and a half. We disassembled our power head, we cleaned up our, ba our base gasket. I don't know if I showed you guys that trick. This uh, stripper, premium stripper. Let it sit half uh, 45 minutes to an hour, just let it sit and don't touch it. And then be careful, it burns, so use gloves and stuff. And then just uh, scrape our power head gasket, cleaned up this section here, I even wiped all the dirt and stuff out of the hood there, make that nice and clean and shiny. And my power head base, gasket came in the mail and my o-ring for the seals we're still waiting for the seals and the water pump kit when we put the we have to install the water pump in the lower unit first before we're able to put the power head back on because the the shift linkage is here you guys know that you've seen it before so we've prepped our base we've prepped our power head and we just got to finish up the water pump on the five and a half and then she will go back together I don't foresee any problems whatsoever uh, oh, a couple of, like I said, showed you a couple of fuel lines, but that's where we're at with the five and a half. We'll get showing you the minute my parts come in. All right, y'all know the drill by now. Okay, and once your housing's together, slide it back up to the power head. Well, you guys are experts by now, I know you got this. Uh, if you're wondering why I keep doing this over and over again, it's the same job, pretty much. Um, I do it because everybody's got their own motor. For, you know, you wanna see your own motor being worked on. So, this is for all my 50, the hell your motor this is 62 that's a fun story too i didn't think they did this uh, upper you know uh shift linkage in the 60s this is a 63 i guess the lower horsepower so just kept that design for whatever reason so in any case well, you, well, you check for your water tube actually before you put your drive shaft back in don't forget your roll pin you ain't getting that in once the drive shaft's up there all right, we're, now that we're lined up with our water tube, of course, we're just gonna line it up, get a screw in so it don't fall out on us. I'm not per se trying to get it leg in. Just 
So I leave it loose this way. I get a little play in my drive shaft here. So I'll be able to move my seal and check it. Put it in halfway up and then play with your shifter here. You get some rotation out of it. This thing spins. You can kind of bend it to do what you want. And then once you're about here, you can put your first nut on there. Put your first three eight nuts in there so that it's it's solidified. You don't have to tighten it, tighten it down. This is all just to kind of get it ready for the where you want it to go. What I would do is once your shifter's aligned, tighten these down. And then once your entire case of roll pins falls on your floor, AKA the pit of misery, dilly dilly, turn your camera off, curse at something, chug a beer, take a shot. Then calm down, come back, and realize shit happens. So when I do the seals on this, you can buy the whole kit online. But uh, I just replaced the O-ring in the carbon fiber. Now the, the black carbon fiber piece that comes up to the top. There's an O-ring in there. I replaced that and then I replaced the seal on top of the top, the bearing top seal carrier. So cap to hold the spring. You got your roll pin in there so it won't fall down. The spring itself. You guys have seen me do this a hundred times. Then our carbon fiber guy. There's a right way and a wrong way. And we bought a brand new O-ring for that. Other piece. That's the so O-ring. And you could go to the store and buy a cheap O-ring. I don't know what size it is. So a lot of times I just go with the original OEM part number online. I'm paying 10 times more money for it. But it is what it is. And I know for a fact it's the right size O-ring. Give it back to the owner. He'll have the right parts. Part number for the O-ring, by the way, it is 303347. You can't see that, but that's what it is. Uh, yeah, and get the size. Get the size and then order them in bulk if, you, if, you're, if you're doing this a lot or if you're just trying to fix your own motor or if you're just doing it once, just order. Uh, you can put grease on this if you want. Uh, I have triple guard grease. I gotta find it. And you put your carbon fiber on top and the, the dry shaft's gonna push it back out. Stupid little metal thing. And the other piece I replace. And again, it's just a core casket. It's just a cork gasket. So you can cut one out, but this one's thick. You know, it's the right size, it's the exact size, and I know I'm getting the right size. Power head base gasket, also new. <laughs> I know I said I only replace certain things, but. Yeah, literally guys. What have I had in here the last couple months? 63 six horsepower, 63 six horsepower. Uh, this is this is a 63 five and a half horsepower. Uh, so the years are matching up. This was a 63. Uh, but the 55, the 55 I worked on, my 55, uh, the 56s, the 60s, they're all the same. Even the powerhead base casket's pretty much the same. Now they'll differ uh, depending on. Oh, certain horsepowers are different, but you know, a lot, the process is 100% the same. Process is the same. Uh, you could gasket seal compound that if you like. Power head, pretty much the same. The carburetor is the same. It's just insane how similar everything is, so. Out of the one. And once you get a couple started, then you can just kind of feel just to make sure you're not poking through that gasket. And you, just, you can lift up, you can play with it. Again, it looks, this, this, this part can be scary, but it ain't, it's so easy. Anyway, so then we'll bolt down our power head, six bolts, and then we start reassembling everything, guys. Same, same thing, different motor, but, but we'll reattach the fuel lines, we'll we put our carb kit together, we will, uh, 
Well then, uh, we'll check her, make sure she's running and pumping water. You guys ever wonder what Black Elf Bill stands for? It could mean black coffee. It could. What? Let's wrap up this five and a half. All we have to do is attach our fuel lines. Uh, and put her in a barrel. See if she runs. You know she's gonna run. You know she's gonna run, right? I would like to mark this point in the film because I'm gonna do something I don't like to do. And when something goes wrong, you're gonna hear me curse. And I'm gonna say, remember that part of the video I told you I didn't like that freaking mother. I'm gonna use a zip tie. Now that route actually makes a zip tie that has a curved edge for fuel length. Who knew? But I don't have that. So we're gonna use a regular old zip tie. And mark my words, when it leaks, I'm gonna be mad because I'm gonna retake it apart. Put a new one on. And here is your tip of the day when you replace the fuel lines. When you take if you if you got the power head off, put the fuel line through the hole first. Because now I don't have an angle, I can't get the hose through the hole. So if your power head's off, stick your fuel line in and set this up first before you put the power head back on, you'll have a lot of clearance. Okay, mechanic, quick tips and tricks, part one. Uh first of all, make sure your fuel line is on before you install your carburetor nuts. Two, these carburetor nuts can be tricky, especially when you're at a weird angle. To get this one, grab the nut in your hand, reach around the back end of the motor, and then you, I mean, I'm not left-handed, but I can grab the nut with these two fingers as opposed to putting it on this way with these or these two fingers, spinning your hand backwards side so doesn't work. So if you grab it from the other side, you can maneuver the carburetor and get the nut this way. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, old outboard trick two don't put your needles in until your carbs on because of the clearance uh, wait until your carburetor is on and then stick your needles where they belong uh, trick or what 99% of the time needs to happen make sure you take this linkage off here at the top to get that carb nut and then push the choke out to get the other carb nut alright that is all for now all right, guys, we're all back together here. We're gonna, it's getting cold in New Jersey. It's not even that cold, out. it's cold enough. Filling with water here, we're gonna. Our fuel line check for leaks. But it should, it should run, so let's see. Let's choke her. She's a turn and a half out. Bottle up. This should start. water pump into. We are pumping water. As the barrel falls over. You cannot make this shit up, bro. Look at it. <laughs> you can't see it. Look at that. As I'm like setting everything up here, it's like I just can't get anything right. Tipping over, the water spilling everywhere. <laughs> it's just amazing what I gotta go through just for a simple start run water test. Because I don't have the right bucket. That's why I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you gotta have the right tool for the job. You can't stand a bucket on a little tire. You gotta get the right stuff. So obviously it started up and idled well there. Get you a nice shot of the water pumping. Tighten up a little fuel fixture and we're good to go.
here nice. Working good. Alright, so that's it. That's a wrap, boys and girls. That's it. This one was easy, guys. It's the same thing every motor pretty much, especially when it comes to the little five and a half, the 60s, 50s. Very, very similar. Yeah, so, so, 50s, 60s motors, especially this little little vintage, very much the same. Power, uh, the pump, power heads, the way they shift and stuff. So, that'll wrap up this cute little 63 with the cooler style hood, but it's the same block, same block and everything. Pump and water nice, runs. Uh, he'll have to adjust the high speed on the water, but it sounds good to me. Uh, in the meantime, subscribe, sub up. We're almost there. We'll see you in the next video.